But one techie word I really like is avatar, which is describing your kind of embodiment in the digital world. And I like it partly because it has a sort of mystical background. In, um, in Sanskrit um, and then Hindi, avatara meant literally descent but it came to mean when a god came down and descended into human form and took on human form as in the Bhagavad Gita or some of the, the great early Vedic texts. And it first featured in English in science fiction as a word describing the embodiment in the digital world. So it was used in, in translations of, of Vedic texts um, since the 19th century. But then the author Paul Anderson wrote a book called Avatar, which began to meld the mystic and technological senses. And then in 1992, the author Neil Stevenson wrote a book called Snow Crash, when he used Avatar for the first time to mean a person's embodiment in a digital world that he called the metaverse. In fact, unknown to Stevenson, there had already been a, before he wrote that book, one of the very, very first sort of um, online games called Habitat, which used the word avatar in a sort of fusion sense. But Stevenson, he brought it to a mainstream audience. And since then, you know, everyone is an avatar now. We all have our avatars, or we have proprietary avatars like Miis in, in the world of Nintendo Wiis. But I love the mystical charge behind it and the idea that we're literally incarnating ourselves online, that we are descending from these forms into some other kind of digital embodiment. And I think it's really interesting how many words have a sort of mythic or fictional charge when you look at their histories online. Even when I look at things describing, say, a Trojan, which is a, you know, a malicious, a malicious program that comes in a fair-seeming guise, which is, of course, based on the Trojan horse from the Aeneid. Or when I think about something like a demon, which is a, an entity that does automated digital processes that sort of keeps the digital world ticking over.